In the name of Christ, amen. This is an exciting text. This is the beginning of the time when the people of Israel are about to be free. They're about to begin their journey through the wilderness. Unfortunately, that journey is going to last much longer than they thought, 40 years. But this is kind of the night, the eve of the end of their slavery, their suffering in Egypt. This, for them, should have been a time of hope. It's interesting, when we look back at what the Israelites went through, and now look at today what our world is like, we can understand why hope is maybe not the easiest thing to have. And whether it's the Israelites at this time in Egypt, or whether it's us living today, it is not always clear why we should have any hope. I mean, just look at the news. Uh, I just read a recent article, Time Magazine, According to the Council on Criminal Justice, the most recent report of 2022, the homicide numbers for the first half of 2022, the last uh, numbers we have, based on data from 23 cities, homicides are up 39% from 2019. That means murders are up almost 40% from 2019. That's pretty rough. The authors also report that property crimes, violent crimes, and drug offenses are going up. Robberies are up by 19%. Larceny up by 20%. Burglaries, 6%. And motor vehicle thefts, 15%. Crime, not good. Also, if you study the statistics, one coming from Lifeway Research, in 2019, again, the last year that data was taken. So remember, 2019 was only the beginning, if not even before the pandemic. 2019 in the United States, 4,500 Protestant churches closed. 3,000 opened. So it was a loss of 1,500 churches. That was 2019. Can you imagine what the number is by today? Post-pandemic. If you also saw the news over the last couple days, China's new foreign minister, uh, Quinn Gang, Gang, Quinn Gang, made a very, uh, one of the most uh, uh, direct and uh, confrontational statements in many years. Quoted as saying this, if the United States does not hit the brakes but continues to speed down the wrong path, no amount of guardrails can prevent derailing and there will surely be conflict and confrontation. This was said just a couple days ago. In other words, we are now hearing about the possible threat of war with China, which by the way has probably the biggest military in the world. But if we're going to do things, we got to go all the way. This is on top of the fact that Russia, that has probably more nuclear weapons than any other country in the world, in the past year has made several veiled, if not open, threats of nuclear war. On top of that, if you look at the last three years and the inflation rate, inflation went up 7% in 2021. 6.5% above that in 2022, and 6.4% above that so far in 2023. Think about all that. It's crazy. Imagine looking back 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago and thinking, we're facing the possibility of World War III, crime is going through the roof, roof. the churches are all closing, and inflation is just going up like a mountain climber. Where is their hope? I think a lot of us, including me, just turn the news off and try to find a good book and pretend it's not happening because I just don't want to hear it anymore. But as hopeless as it sounds for us right now, imagine being an Israelite 
back in the time of Exodus. These are people that have been slaves for generations. Imagine raising your son and your daughter knowing that they would just grow up to be slave and that's all. No hope. It's not like where they're going to go to school. It's where they're going to serve as a slave in the country of Egypt. Then Moses comes along and stirs up all sorts of trouble. And the slaves now are facing worries that they're going to get killed. Probably a little upset with Moses because now Pharaoh and, and his armies are angry. And Moses has stirred up the most powerful, ruthless leader, ruler, and army in the known world. And this little group of Israelites, well, relatively little, not little as all, but are sitting in the midst of this going, what is going on? God had sent plagues on the Egyptians, a plague of blood, plague of frogs, plague of gnats, plague of flies, plague of livestock, plague of boils, plague of hail, plague of locusts, plague of darkness, and none of it did anything. Pharaoh still said, no way. No way, God. The Israelites stay. So now on this night, the Israelites sit hover, or just huddled in their homes. Why would they have any hope? Would you really want to be Moses at this point? Trust me, guys. Really? They were probably some of the most hopeless people you ever saw. Huddled in their homes wondering if they would even survive. And then, here's what Moses tells them to give them hope. Not that God is sending a mighty army. Not that he's sending angels riding on missiles out of the sky. He's not sending lightning from heaven to kill all the Egyptians. No. He wants you to go kill a lamb. Eat it. All of it. Oh. And then smear the blood on your door. Oh, well, now I feel better. Okay, well, whew, for a minute there I was worried. Things weren't going well. But now that we got the lamb thing, oh, it's all going to be fine. I mean, <laughs> that's got to solve it, right? Take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts of the lintel. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it the night of the Passover. Seriously, God, a dead lamb? That's our hope? Seriously? I mean, do you for a minute think that you would really have any hope in that moment? It's amazing that people even did it. But then look what happened. Exodus 12, 29. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where someone was not dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron by night and said, up, go out from among my people, both you and the people of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said, be gone. And, I love this last part, and bless me also. <laughs> I love that, the gall. Sorry about all that. You know, the slavery and the killings and all that. Could you, could you put in a good word for me? Because every house in the land, somebody is dead. So we can sum up the entirety of these texts with this. No hope, then the lamb. No hope, then the lamb. And that pretty much sums it up for us tonight. Right here. Revelation chapter 5 verse 11. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and glory and blessing. The lamb of Exodus is the lamb of Revelation. The lamb is Christ. The lamb that was killed in Exodus was simply pointing the way to the ultimate lamb, which was Christ, the divine lamb. The lamb of Calvary that went to the cross, that died and gave his blood 
and rose again from the dead. And in that blood is your hope, just as in the blood of that lamb was their hope. And in that hope given to you is the forgiveness of your sins, but not just the forgiveness of you, but the redemption of the world. On that cross, the blood of the lamb provided for the redemption of the world and all its failures. The entire earth, everything that's broken about us, everything that's broken about our existence, that blood, that lamb, is our hope. And tonight, it is my prayer that you go home with wide, eyes wide open and you go look at the news and you look at these countries that are threatening war. You look at the financial picture that threatens to collapse. You look at all the churches that are closing their doors and you just smile and say, we have the lamb and we have hope. There is nothing that anyone can do or say in this world that will defeat that lamb or our hope. Romans 15, 4. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. This night we remember that back then, thousands of years ago, hopelessness, utter hopelessness, and then the Lamb. Nothing has changed. We are surrounded by utter hopelessness, but we have the Lamb. The Lamb has come, have hope. Let me close tonight with a, a poem that came to my attention that I'd never heard of before, but written by Oscar Wilde, very famous author. And maybe some of you have read this. I just took a little, few little pieces. But Oscar Wilde, the famous author, writes a poem called The Ballad of Reading Gale. And it's about hopelessness and the lamb. Let me read it to you. He writes, yet each man kills the things he loves. By each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattening word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Each narrow cell in which we del dwell is a foul and dark latrine, and the fetid breath of living death chokes up each gated screen. And all but lust is turned to dust in humanity's machine. With midnight always in one's heart and twilight in one's cell, we turn the crank or tear the rope, each in his separate hell. And the silence is more awful far than the sound of a brazen bell. And thus we rust life's iron chain, degraded and alone. And some men curse and some men weep, and some men make no moan. But God's eternal laws are kind and break the heart of stone. And with tears of blood, he cleansed the hand, the hand that held the steel, for only blood can wipe out blood, and only tears can heal. And the crimson stain that was of Cain became Christ's snow-white seal. The Lamb has come. The Lamb is here. You have hope. Please have hope. In the name of Christ. Amen. At this time, I would ask the ushers to come forward and collect the cards of uh, the visitors' cards and offerings and the like. Peace of the Lord be with you.